Stick around because we're going to do a three hole oil change on this soft tail. Roll the intro. Welcome to Sick Baggers YouTube channel. I'm Steve and today we're going to be doing exactly what I said in the beginning of the video, a three hole oil change on this 2015 soft tail back here. The first thing I'm going to tell you, just like I'm going to tell you in every other maintenance video that we do on the Harley Touring or the soft tail metals, is get yourself a service manual. Now, this kind of covers a lot of years of soft tails that we can do right here. This same process is going to be done on all different kinds of soft tails and years. But to make sure that you get the proper torque specs and the proper oil amount levels and all that stuff, how to check it on the jiffy stand, off the jiffy stand, standing up, hot, cold, get yourself a service manual for your bike. They're readily available online. You can search like for this one, 2015 Heritage Softail Service Manual PDF. Guarantee you one's gonna come up. It's gonna be free. It's not gonna be a $150 book, but it's gonna be a PDF that you can download to your phone so you have it out there while you're working on your bike, a tablet, computer, whatever. So let's get the camera over to the workbench and I'll show you the stuff that you're gonna need to get this job done. So to go over some of the basic tools that we're gonna need to do this job, like I said, a lot of this stuff can be purchased on Amazon. I'll put the link down in the description and take you over to the tool if you need to purchase it. We're gonna need an inch pound torque wrench and a foot pound torque wrench. If you are just doing this in your garage on your own bike, there's absolutely no reason why you need to go out and spend 150 to $300 on a torque wrench. Buy the ones off of Amazon. I use these here in the shop for the last four years. Absolutely no issues out of them and they have a great price on them. We do have the Amsoil V-Twin kit. The V-Twin kit is gonna come with four quarts of Amsoil 2050 synthetic oil. It's gonna come with an oil filter. Inside there, there will be an O-ring for your plug taped to the inside of the oil filter box. Now, if you buy the Amsoil kit, you're not gonna get an O-ring for the transmission or the primary. That's not part of the kit. That's just the oil kit, so you get an O-ring. But we're doing a three-hole oil change, so we are going to need to pick up a couple of more O-rings, and you can get those on Amazon as well. Pack 10, pack 50, pack of 100 if you want. Always good to have an extra derby cover gasket on hand when you're doing this. The derby cover gasket can generally be reused a couple of times before it needs replaced, but they are cheap. You can pick these up on Amazon as well, but you can also get them from your dealership. Of course, you're going to need some towels to clean up your mess. You will need an oil filter socket. As you can see, this one here has a hole cut out of the side of it. You're going to want to get one of these for the soft tail because where Harley put the crankshaft position sensor is right there. You're going to need to sneak this edge around that sensor and get it onto the oil filter. And of course, you're going to need an extension, a wire brush to clean up your plugs. You're going to need a Torx 27 wrench. You're going to need a 3 8 Allen wrench. I prefer the one that has a normal Allen wrench on one side and the ball on the other. And we'll get to that here in just a little bit. You're going to need a pick or a pocket knife or something like that to pick the old O-rings off. Here's a little pack of O-rings that I actually purchased from Amazon. You're going to need a 5 8 You're going to need a Torx 27 socket. Pick these up on Amazon. I'll link that down below as well. You can pick up the whole funnel kit um, for pretty cheap. And then you can pick these up at Walmart or Amazon, wherever you shop. Um, these little things that can measure fluid because later on we're going to have to dump fluid out just a little bit so we know exactly how much is in the court and then that'll help us when we're putting it into the bike so quickly before we start draining a bunch of fluids i'm going to show you where the three plugs are to actually drain the fluids so bear with me i got the camera off the tripod so we're a little bit shaky here to find the oil pan plug you're going to go to the rear foot peg we're going to go straight down underneath the rear foot peg right there that's going to be your oil drain plug that's a five eighths so to find the transmission drain plug we're going to go underneath the bike in between the shocks right here these two canisters are your shocks hopefully right up in the middle we can tilt this camera up in here where we can see it so right there between the two shocks that's another five eighths that's going to be your transmission drain plug the primary side's very easy right underneath your inspection cover you're going to go right down and it's right there. That's going to be another 5 8 plug. So we're going to start on this side because there are a couple of things I want to touch on real quick. I've changed a lot of oil on these bikes and I see this over and over again. These little derby cover bolts here, these little Torx 27, they get seized up. They're hard to get out and then you end up stripping them out and you end up having to drill them out and it's a real pain. It just ends up being a really bad day. So starting by taking the derby cover off, A, allows air in for this to drain a lot faster and B, if you reach under here and you drain your oil first and then you come up here and these are seized up and you end up stripping them out you're going to have an even worse day because this is where you put your fluid back in so if you can't get this derby cover off and you've already drained the fluid now you've got another issue 
We just want to break these loose to make sure that we can get these off without stripping them out. And then that's going to allow the air in. We're going to reach under there with our 5 eighths and we're going to bust that loose and let that drain. And I also need to make a note too that you want to do this when the bike is at operating temperature. It just makes the fluid come out a lot easier. So we're going to take our Torx 27 being really careful to go ahead and get these loose. Now we have these loose, we can back these out to let that rubber seal in there break loose so we get air in there. That's usually good enough, we got some air in there. So we're gonna reach under here where I showed you that bolt was with our 5 8 We're gonna bust that loose. So while that drains, I'm gonna bring the plug back up here. There's a couple of things we wanna look at. Right here, the O-ring. Now the service manual is gonna tell you to inspect the O-ring. These things are super cheap. Get that thing off there and get a brand new one on. So the second thing we wanna look at is the end. The end of that is magnetic. And we can look at that and look for any metal shavings that are on there. I don't see anything that's out of the ordinary, very barely any at all on this one, but you wanna inspect that. And if you have a ton of metal shavings, you got some stuff going on inside there that needs to be addressed. So once we've inspected it while that's draining, we're gonna go ahead and get this plug cleaned up and dressed up and ready to put back. If there's the ever been any kind of compound put on this bolt, get you a wire brush, go around that. I've seen these come in with thread tape on them. I've seen them come in with compound on them. Putting a little bit of the white sealer compound around this is not a terrible idea. We used to do it all the time. I actually did it in the Harley Turing video. But if you do use the white compound, just make sure that you get a wire brush and get all of the old compound off before you put new back on. This bike, we're not gonna put it on there. I am, however, gonna take a little pick and I'm gonna get underneath this O-ring. I'm gonna pull that off. The only thing the service manual tells us is that we need to fill the primary back up with the bike upright. So draining the fluid, you could do it with it upright or you can do it with it on the jiffy stand. With the plug being on the left side of the bike, doing it on the jiffy stand is gonna allow more fluid to get over to that hole and out. Now we are completely on the jiffy stand now and maybe only got one or two more drops out. So not a big, huge difference doing the bike upright or on the jiffy stand. We're gonna go ahead and finish pulling the rest of our bolts out of our derby cover. On the back side of the derby cover, we're gonna take a towel and we're gonna clean all of this oil up if there's any oil on there. This is where you're gonna to want to inspect your O-ring. Now generally you can get one or two, maybe three uses out of this O-ring before you start seeing any damage or you just need to go ahead and replace it. Once again, it's a very cheap O-ring. You can pick these up on Amazon, you can get them at Harley, just make sure you get the one that fits your bike. That one looks really good, so we're gonna take our towel and we're gonna clean up this surface right here. Any oil that may be on here, dirt, grime, gets in the edge of that derby cover. Just get all of that cleaned up. We're gonna take our cleaned up plug. We're gonna put a new O-ring on it, slide it all the way down to the bottom. Reach up under here. Get this started. This drain plug, and actually all three drain plugs, call for 14 to 21 foot-pounds. So one thing I just wanna to touch on real quick too when we're talking about torque wrenches because this drives me insane. I see it on YouTube all the time when you set your torque wrench to the desired foot pound or inch pound weight you're going to get a click right when you get to that weight we set it at 19 pounds we turned it and it clicked that's 19 pounds we didn't click it again and click it again just to make sure we clicked it one time at 19 pounds not two or three more ugga duggas just to make sure because every time you do that you're actually turning that bolt just a little bit so one ugga dugga and be done with it so our primary calls for 32 ounces wet there's a wet ounce and there's a dry ounce. Dry ounce would be you just rebuilt this and it's never had fluid in it before, but it is wet. We just drained it, so there's still a little bit of fluid in there. So it calls for 32 ounces. Once we have it topped off, we're gonna take our rag again and make sure that we clean up all of this oil. That funnel still gets a little bit of oil on this lip. And when you pull it off, it kind of drips down. So just make sure that you clean all this up. 
Hey, I hope you're enjoying the free video. I just wanted to take a real quick second to let you know how much I appreciate the hell out of every one of you. If you're liking what you see on the channel and you want to see more, it tremendously helps our channel if you just click that like button, hit the subscribe button, and tell your friends about us. You can also find Sick Backers on other social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and even now, we have a TikTok, so make sure to look us up over there. Every video that we put out is absolutely free all of the time. We don't have any secret squirrel websites where we have to go and pay us Patreon and all that stuff to, to see certain videos and every time we do a video out here, it is absolutely free to you. Check us out everywhere and tell your friends about us. I'm gonna let you get back to the video. So at this point, I wanna put our derby cover back on. We're gonna put the five bolts back in and before you ask, there's no blue Loctite on these. The service manual doesn't call for blue Loctite. We're just gonna turn these until they touch because there's a very important star pattern that these have to be torqued in. These get torqued 84 to 108 inch pounds, not foot pounds inch pounds. So the star pattern we're going to use is one, two, three, four, five. The primary is now done. Now we'll move to the transmission. So on the transmission side, the first thing we want to do is remove this plug. This is a 3 8 inch Allen. We're going to get this removed to allow air to flow so this drains a lot easier. Now, if you have an Allen head wrench like this that has an Allen on one side and a ball on the other, it makes this a lot easier. You can stick the Allen head wrench in there first to break it free and then use the ball head because you can actually put that in at a little bit of an angle to go ahead and get that plug out. And once you get it loose, you can pull it up and slide it out. Now the fun part. Remember the plug I showed you at the beginning of the video where it's up underneath in between the shocks? That's the one we're gonna pull now. The reason why I showed you those plugs a while ago instead of doing it now is because I'm not quite sure I can get in there with a camera and a wrench and everything and get that off. So just remember, transmission is next. We remove the transmission fill hole plug up here at the top. Now we're gonna go to the bottom, go up in between the shocks and we're gonna remove the uh, drain plug up there. And chances are you're gonna get a little oil all over yourself getting that one out. It's hard to get your hand out of there. Be careful, when you're wiping it down, you don't wanna wipe the end of the plug. You wanna inspect that plug again. We get it up into camera here. We're gonna go around the outside of that magnet. We got a little bit of metal shavings, but nothing super serious, nothing out of the ordinary. Once again, while that's draining, we're gonna clean this up. We're gonna get a new O-ring put on it and get it ready to put back in the bike. So we got our bolt cleaned up. We're gonna put our new O-ring on, just like the last one. So we've got our cleaned up plug. We got our new O-ring under there. And we're gonna reach up under there in between the two shocks and get this reinstalled. Now remember, you're kind of doing this blindly. So just get you an extension and your 5.8 socket. Go ahead and load it in there. And just take your time putting it in. You, you don't wanna cross thread this guy. So just take your time, make sure that it turns smoothly all the way to the top and then we'll torque it down. Fourteen twenty-one foot-pounds, one ugga dugga. So our transmission on this bike calls for 28 ounces. This is 32 ounces, one quart. So what I've done is taken four ounces out and poured it into this, which leaves us 28 ounces in here. Just makes it a little easier than pouring and stopping and pouring and stopping. We know that we have 28 ounces in this quart now. So filling the transmission, you need to do it on the jiffy stand. If you look at the marks on the dipstick, it just has an F and an A. A is gonna be at the very bottom, it's gonna be add, and then you're gonna have F. You got a very, very small tolerance where that oil needs to be. So what we're gonna do is put about 26 ounces in there, and the way to check it, you don't just drop it in there, you don't tighten it all the way down. Service manual tells us to put the dipstick in, tighten it till the rubber touches, but do not crank it down. At room temperature, we need to be between add and full. So we're gonna start with 26, test it, and then go from there. Now we screwed that into the rubber touch. Now we're gonna back this back out. And we barely own the dipstick, just like we should be. I'm gonna go ahead and put the full 28 ounces in. 
So because we're doing this wet, I'm leaving just a little bit out of that 28 ounces, just in case it didn't fully get drained. We can check it and then we can always add to it to get it up to between the add and full mark. Remember, it's a very, very small tolerance. We're gonna take our clean dipstick and we're gonna drop it in. Okay, there our rubber has touched. We've stopped turning, so now we're gonna back this out. Now with the new fluid, it's a little bit hard to read, so you may have to turn it in the light but we are dead center of that X. So, so here's the thing on the dipsticks. There are torque specs on that. I can barely get an Allen wrench in there and I don't have tools to get in here and put a torque on that, but it's 25 to 75 inch pounds, which isn't a ton. So I wait till the rubber hits and then I just give it an extra little turn till it's tight. There you go. So now we're in the home stretch. All we have left to do is the oil and that one's pretty simple. Right up here at the top, you're gonna pull your dipstick out gonna get that guy out of there, get that wiped off. The oil drain plug right underneath the rear foot peg, straight down, and you'll see it right there. We're gonna pop that off and get this drain in. Now that we have the plug out, we're gonna do the same thing again. Watch to not wipe the top until you actually inspect the magnet. We're gonna kinda just run our finger around there no metal shavings whatsoever on that one so that's good if you buy the amsoil twin cam kit inside the oil filter is where your o-ring is going to be we're going to get our plug cleaned up and once again if there's any sealant on there you're going to take your wire brush and clean that off we're going to put our new o-ring on now that plug's ready to go back in the bike so here's the part where it's going to get a little bit messy you can see how close this oil filter is to the engine here so it's going to be hard to get any kind of funnel tin foil anything in there and then also you have the sensor here on the front which is again why the oil filter wrench is cut out on the side so we're going to sneak this in i'm going to turn it just to get it onto the oil filter sneak it in there like that gonna break this loose and this is where you're gonna get a little messy now when I get it loose oil's gonna start coming out it's fine we're just gonna have to clean it up but I'm gonna turn the wrench and get the wrench out of there go ahead and take this off by hand spin it flip it up like this put your finger in it and pull it out and as you can see we lost oil in there make sure you got a towel underneath your bike too so it doesn't go all over the ground or concrete now putting the oil filter back on i see a lot of people do it a lot of different ways always take some fresh clean oil and lube up the o-ring that's on the back side of this and i see a lot of guys either dump a little bit in there roll it around let the oil saturate the oil filter you obviously cannot fill this up and then stick it on there you're going to pour it all out the service manual doesn't tell us to put any oil in there so you're just going to lube up that slide this into place once the rubber on the oil filter has came in contact with the flange back there, you're gonna wanna get your hands good and clean because you don't wanna put a wrench on this, but you're gonna give it about a half to three quarters of a turn with your hand to seal it. And that's pretty much it. The biggest thing is, is rimming that rubber O-ring on that new oil filter with a little bit of oil. Like I said, it's gonna give it a better contact surface back there. Plus it's gonna keep it from seizing up the next time that you have to take that oil filter off. And the other most important thing is, is don't put the wrench on that and crank that thing down. Once the rubber makes contact, half to three quarters of a turn by hand and stop all we have left to do is put the drain plug back in you reach up under there and get that started by hand it's very important to start these drain plugs by hand you don't want to use power tools or even a ratchet you want to be able to feel it to make sure that it's going in and not cross threading once again 14 to 21 foot pounds So now we're adding oil back to the bike. It'll say fill, and I have a pretty big chunk of plastic up there, and then over here it'll say full hot. On the back side, it says check on side stand. The service manual tells us to initially add two quarts, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna speed this up, we're gonna get two quarts in here. So the service manual tells us to initially put two quarts in the bike. So we're just gonna speed this up and get two quarts in here. 
So now that we have our initial two quarts in, it tells us to do an engine oil hot check. So we're gonna put our plug back in, we're gonna fire the bike up, we're gonna let it get to operating temperature, and then we're gonna check it again. And from there, we're gonna gradually add that third quart until we're at the top of the hot mark. So here's a little bonus tip for you though. If you're getting a lot of blow by, we talked about this when we did the install of the Trask air cleaner. If you're getting a lot of blow by, which is oil that comes up here through these banjo bolts and it's supposed to be put back into the motors of the EPA Harley thing, and it's supposed to be reburnt and all that good stuff. And it generally doesn't do that great of a job of it. And it starts getting oil dripping down on your motor and blowing back on your exhaust. You've been out on hot days and you've kind of been riding it pretty hard and you come home and you see oil dripping down on there. It's because you're right at the top of that hot mark. Actually bring the oil level down just a little bit and you won't have that big of an issue with it. So what we're going to do is bring it up to about three quarters on the hot side. So now we got the bike up to operating temperature. We're gonna go ahead and pull the dipstick. We're gonna clean it off. We're gonna put it back in. We're gonna pull it up and we're gonna check it out. We are right to the bottom of the fill. So we're gonna add about a half a quart from there and try to get it up right in the three quarter mark so we can avoid some of that blow eye in the air cleaner. Wipe our dipstick, put it back in. We're right about three quarter now, and that is all there is to it, to doing a three hole oil change on a soft tail. Very, very simple, like I said in the beginning of the video, just a couple of basic tools, a little bit of knowledge. Make sure to get a service manual so you know the torque specs and the fluid levels on your bike whether or not you need to check it on the jiffy stand, bike straight up, fill it on the jiffy stand, check it hot, all that good stuff. All that information is in the service manual. Now, even though we did this on a heritage, you can take this exact information and apply it to other soft tail models. But that's where that service manual is gonna come in handy to let you know your torque specs and your fill levels and all that good stuff. So make sure that you download a service manual for your motorcycle if you plan on doing any wrenching whatsoever on your bike. I hope this video helped you. And if it did, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe, but also leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought about the video. Actually, we did one on the touring models and now we've got one on the soft tail. The touring model video is actually our number one watched video on our channel. So let me know in the comment section what you thought about the soft tail three hole oil change. A little bit different than the touring models, but not too bad. Just a little bit of service manual stuff, torque specs, oil levels, all that good stuff. If you have any questions at all on this, leave it in the comment section down below. I'll help you the best that I can. I'm going to go get myself cleaned up. I hope to see you in the next video, but until then, as always, be safe, keep your knees in the breeze. Thanks for checking out the video. Don't forget to hit that like and that subscribe popping up over here. And don't forget to check out the rest of the channel because we have a ton of bagger related and soft tail videos on our channel. And to get you started, maybe you can check out this one or this one. I'm not really going to say anything else. You can just click one of those and take it over to another video.